Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast Live Stories. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Stat Pearson, and today I'm joined by the Lord of all Schwarzenegger impersonators, that who is without accentual equal, the Alpha and Omega MC nominator himself, a one Lord Zenkai. Put the cookie down now. I went and grabbed the cookie just so I could actually put it down. I missed that. And of course, we're joined by he who leads House Tono. The James to end all Jameses, a one James of House Tono. I'm in the house now. How you doing, everybody? I give that pun a C. And of course, here comes a new challenger, a uh, long timer slash first timer. Uh, old friend of mine from conventions and damn good Resident Evil fan himself. Introducing Lacan. Hey there. <laughs> uh, did he forget to hold down the button? I don't know. It kind of made me. <laughs> no, Discord's a pain. I do miss conventions though. I think we all do, but at least technically you got anime Midwest, so there's that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Oh shit, I might bump into you then. Um There's always the internet. <laughs> um Alright, so today's story is gonna be possibly our only, if not first, emotional roller coaster of a story. Because it does not have a happy ending. But on the bright side, Neko's not here to have feelings or want to talk about feelings with me once this is over. And thank God for that. Not that I hate talking about my feelings. I just hate talking about feelings with certain people. Like people who will treat me different and coddle me on some level when this story's over, which has happened quite a few times. All right, so uh, let's just get this ball rolling. Okay, so uh, for those who aren't aware, which is possibly everyone I've ever known, besides my father being uh, way older than he's looked practically ever since he hit 20, he's had a uh, OPD. Now, for those who are new to that term, it means obstructive pulmonary disease or disorder. What that basically means is your blood flow, uh, your heart, and your lungs, and the way they flow and sync up, it's changing. In my dad's case, he was basically slowly choking to death. But he never sound like Darth Vader Wheezy, or like he had been smoking 60, 70 years of his life and shit like that. So, he got diagnosed with it, I believe maybe a full year or before or a few years after I was born. Now, I was told about it, but like any, you know, dumbass little kid who's happy with everything in the world and life and the planet and yada, 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 toddler shit, I didn't understand it or they sugarcoated it for me because who really wants to wake up in the morning and tell a toddler, hey, your dad's going to die real soon. So, miraculously, and when I say miraculous, I really mean if he just hadn't abused his genes, uh, he made it about 18 extra years after what they gave him before he would die. They initially gave him three years. He added about 18 to 19 to that before he left this earth. And that's from him not actually putting effort, so to speak, putting effort into actually maintaining himself to, you know, extend his lifespan. Who knows if he actually worked out and whatnot and did what the doctors told him, he, he could probably still be here today, you know, but I digress that, that little, uh, precursor need to be said because y'all already asked me what disease he had anyway. All right. So speed forward to the mid two thousands. Uh, we'll say about maybe 2014 or 2013 something along those lines i come home one day and there are tubes and wires everywhere and i start hearing (laughs) 
And my first thought is, who the fuck is watching Star Wars this loud? Not even joking, that was actually what I said. Who is watching Star Wars this loud? So I follow the trail of ropes. Like, I'm literally picking up this tube, seeing where it goes. And all I hear is, boy, pay attention. And I look up, and there's my dad on this giant-ass oxygen tank machine, which is automatically regulating him. And I was like, who did you lose a fight against? And he started laughing. And he said, uh, well, I went to get some groceries and the Reaper decided to bitch slap me in the back of the head. And I started laughing. He started laughing. He choked a little bit. I was like, okay. So mom comes up. She tells me what's up. And I'm like, Didn't, d- why am I just not hearing about this? And she's like, no, we told you about his OPD a long, long time ago. M- maybe you forgot or didn't believe. I know you were little, but at the same time, he didn't look like he was going through any of the symptoms mostly. I was like, so on top of not looking his age, this man also didn't look like he was dying slowly and painfully. And then my dad on the couch just goes, I mean, it's not that bad. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be laughing at it. He's got a smile on his face, but I don't. So... He goes to the hospital every so often. I try to get my mind off that beeping noise because it goes off every single night. I was having a hard time maintaining consciousness, not because I couldn't sleep or I couldn't sleep, but because that one beep was so specific and precise. When I would hear other beeps, I would almost hear it going off in the back of my head. It was annoying. But obviously, I'm not about to, I don't know, hit the shutdown button on my dad's life support system, so to speak. So eventually, uh, they get him a portable tank. So it's like almost a book bag type situation, or he could hold it in a duffel if he wanted. And he's got enough air to last him over a day, but he can actually walk around with it. And he had enough insurance to get him his own in-house nurse, because, well, my mom still works. I was going to two colleges at the time, and, well, that wasn't going to last because I couldn't maintain consciousness. I was falling asleep in classes, waking up in another one, which a douchey thing for a teacher to do, especially the ones that don't hate me. Or I would go to sleep on public transportation, wake up at the end of the line. Like I could not sleep in my own, uh, in my own house. But you know, when he got to the small tank, at least during the daytime hours, the beeping's not there. But obviously the problem isn't the daytime hour beeps because I'm not home. It's the nighttime when I'm trying to sleep in the back room. So eventually I start talking to him about whatever a son would talk to his father about when you know his lifespan is coming to an end. So I'm not going to sit up here and say I remember all those stories. And even if I could, I'm not going to regale y'all with that. We'd be here for like seven hours. I like for these things to run uh, 60 minutes or less. So eventually I hear about uh, he might have sight problems. So I told him, hey, oh man, if you got any sight problems, you know, just say something. You obviously not going to be driving a car anytime soon, but if you're trying to get something or you think you can't see something, let me know. Turn the lights on or turn the lights up. Just something. He's like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need all that. I was like, yeah, you say that now. I was like, well, I'm going to say it tomorrow too. I was like, ha 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 ha. I go to bed. Now it's the weekend. I'm getting ready to go to this place called Hayes Park. They have an indoor, in-ground swimming pool. I'm just trying to calm myself the fuck down. So, I'm about to go outside my swimming trunks, right? And I pass up my dad's room, or my parents' room, and he's like, hey, boy. I was like, yeah, what's up? Uh, did you just wake up? No. Why the hell are you in your damn drawers then? I was like, I'm not in my drawers. You not in your drawers right now. I was like, no. So then I, you know, rub the fabric so it makes that weird noise that all swimming trunks do, whatever that fabric is. They say it's nylon, but it's always nylon and something else. I was like, so he gets up, he walks over to me. I was like, Dad, I know you're older than swimming trunks and dinosaurs, 
but these are swimming trunks. Ha, 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 ha. You think I don't know swimming trunks when I see them? So then he just wipes his hand across them, right? I shit you not. His nail was so sharp, he pierced the fabric and he almost nicked my balls. Freaking ouch. I mean, not really. He almost hit them, but he just pierced the fabric. And I'm just like, holy shit, dad, what the fuck? I'm like, what's wrong with you? You just went through my trunks. I don't know, man. Women find it very attractive to have pierced nuts. I'm not going to question how you would know the answer to that question. Moving on. So I was like, oh, wait, I see the strap. Yeah, these are swimming trunks. No, 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 no. How the fuck did your nail go through the trunks, dad? I was like, there's a hole. So I pull it open. He's like, holy shit. He's impressed. But then he says again, holy shit. Like he's disturbed by it at the same time. So I was like, I was like, bro, hold up your hands. So I look at his hands and I'm looking. I was like, why are your nails like two or three times thicker than normal nails? Saber tooth. I'm like, what are you talking about? My nails always been thick. Like, they haven't been this thick. I mean, I was clipping my toenails not too long ago. What the fuck? Then I hear my mom coming through the door. So, uh, there's a front door and a side door on my house, not a back door. And the side door is uh, is in the middle of the house where the basement is. So it's actually in between elevation levels of the basement and the first floor of the house or the top floor of the house. So she sees me in the trunks and she's like, hey, you need to, to replace those trunks. Uh, it's got a hole in them. I was like, funny, you should mention that. Guess how they got there. So me and my mom both looking at my dad's nails now. My mom used to be a nurse. So she knows a lot more about medical shit than most people do. But she's been a while since she's been a nurse. So I was, we just looking at shit and it's like, my dad's like, why y'all looking at me? Like I just sped up my lifespan. I just clipped my nails. And, and she's like, Walter, that's my dad's name. Also my middle name, Walter. It's not supposed to be this thick. And my dad just goes, <laughs> and, and I just go, no, 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 stop. Do that later. Not right now. I'm pretty sure he was about to make a dick joke. I don't know. I don't remember seeing my dad's dick that often. Yes, he gave me baths and showers and shit, but like any kid, I'm not really trying to stare at my parents' dick. So I was just like, okay, should we like take him somewhere? It's like, has he been acting um, a bit different? Like, well, for one thing, you couldn't tell these were swimming trunks. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, maybe it's nice, I think, but that don't explain the nails. And my dad's like, oh, fine, I'll go tomorrow or something. I was like, sweet, okay. Because my mom still got to go to work. And I still got to go to college. College is. So. Speed forward to the next day. I come in the house. Uh, after school. And I thought some. I legit thought some shit was going down. I'm going to tell you exactly what I heard in order. I open the door. I close it. And I hear. Holy shit. I didn't know it could go that far. So I'm immediately paused and frozen in place right now. I've been lucky in life to never be one of those children who accidentally bumps into their parents bumping uglies. And I was thought, you know what? I'm going to go hide in the garage and pretend this didn't happen until I actually believe it for two days. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And then I hear, well, that's actually pretty normal, Mr. Pearson. I was like, that ain't my mama. So then I just stop and I start listening again. And I just hear, holy shit, I didn't think it would come back. Also, what do fair foot? Now, for those who don't know what that means, which is all y'all except me, um, reminder or discovery for y'all, I guess. My dad's a Creole. If you're not sure what it is, feel free to Google it. Explanation would take too long. Most Creoles uh, are either partially fluent or bilingual and their second language is usually French. Vatu Fair Foot is possibly the longest way in any language to say fuck you. So whoever this person is, is pissing off my dad. But it kind of sounds funny now. So I sit on the staircase and I just want to hear this shit. So next thing I do, 
is I hear this noise and I just hear, I just hear a pop sound like a cracked bone and my dad going, <laughs> I was like, is there a horse in the living room? Like I actually thought that. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to go look at this shit. And I go up front. I was like, hey, dad. Uh, who are you? Oh, I'm the care nurse, the daycare nurse uh, for your dad. And I'm just like, yeah, daycare. She's, and then my dad just goes, she's not my babysitter. Oh, no, no, no. I would never babysit someone as loud as you. <laughs> and I start laughing. So I was like, dad, what was that horse noise just now? I don't know what you're talking about. He's been making that randomly on and off all day. I was like, I've never heard you do that. I was like, look, I got the hose in my nose and I immediately died laughing. I know he meant oxygen tank, but <laughs> he said, I got holes in my nose and I just, I just lost it a little bit. And the nurse did too. So we recover and he's like, I got the hose in my nose and you know, air pressure is a little bit different. So sometimes when I try to laugh or exhale, you know, it doesn't come out right. And that sound shows up. I was like, oh yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm still giggling a little bit. So yeah, so I asked her like, what is she doing? It's like, oh, well, we're helping his heart and blood flow and his uh, cardio and his cardio training uh, since, you know, getting him to a physical therapy might not, might be a bit of a hassle. And I was like, and he was like, yeah, my military insurance is pretty much taking care of this. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, uh, ma'am, if you need anything, um, let me know. And she looks at me with this serious ass face. Do you have any vodka or painkillers? They're for me, not him. I laugh and walk off, not knowing she was serious. Now, my dad isn't going to be an asshole to a nurse because my mom will tear him limb from limb because my mom used to be a nurse, so she know what it's like, you know? And <laughs> I just went in my back room and literally all through the night at random, I heard, oh, <laughs> and then he would occasionally go, it's not that funny. Cause he could hear me laughing from the back. Yes. Uh, when you are on an air tank, um, a lot of people consider the spout where the air comes out as the hose. But that's not actually the proper name for it. But since a lot of people don't know the proper name for the insertion part, they say the nose hose. So he said when he said holes in my nose, he literally just meant the uh, oxygen valve tube outlet. <laughs> no, it's just it's just the content. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like he said that she's like, man, I can't help it. I got holes in my nose. Like. What's <laughs> Oh shit! Uh. Uh. I'm sorry. I no. can't pass that up, <laughs> bro. It's okay. It's okay. I was laughing on and off for the rest of that night. There's some holes in my nose. There's some holes in my nose. Anyways, um, so my first thought is, oh shit, we're probably gonna need some more chairs. Now, for those who don't know this, which is everybody, I'm actually the last of nine kids. And uh, no, my mom didn't pop all of them out. We're all half siblings. Uh, my Well, uh, we already, I uh, know, right? We already had this discussion earlier in an older video, but I'm gonna just give y'all the cliff notes. In my dad's previous marriage, apparently this man didn't realize he was married to a thought. And before you think, oh, you're just saying that because she's your ex, uh, she's your dad's ex. Like, no, 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 no. Hear me out here. So... Not only did my sisters and brothers tell my dad, hey, dad, mama thought his neighbors told him, uh, excuse me, Mr. Pearson, your girl a thought. And not the only reason she got caught wasn't because he finally started listening and believing his own biological relatives and his neighbors, but because of the two jobs he had at the time, one of them had a short shift. And he came home early thinking he going to smash his wife. She was smashing something all right in his bed while the kids were there. She was insatiable. So yeah, she was a thought. And don't get me wrong. I do not hate any of my siblings, but I'm going to tell you this. I honestly think there's a few of them that ain't his. 
but that's not on my mama. So I'm thinking they're going to come by at some point because, well, dad's in the twilight hour, right? And I, and I was legit just thinking, shit, do we have enough chairs? Because see, here's the thing. I'm the last born and the one who was born before me, fucking 30. So literally all of my sisters and my brother technically have uh, have, have kids. So that means I could potentially have a sea of sisters. My brother was dead at the time, but he had kids too. Sisters and a shit ton of great nieces and great nephews all coming over here in this one living room. Now, my living room was a pretty normal, basic size. But let me tell you, that many people, we can't fit all that. We gonna need some extra shit. So I told my mom, I'm like, hey, uh, do we have like extra chairs in the basement and stuff? Like, why? Well, I mean, at some point in time, all my sisters and sisters is gonna come over and the nieces and nephews might too. It's like, yeah, that's a distinct possibility. Um, so I'm talking to her about this and all of a sudden I asked, cause I have moved in, I have moved back from college dorms at this point. Cause remember this story is elapsed. This isn't all in one day. There's a, this is happening over the course of a few weeks. So I'm talking to my mom and I was like, Hey, do you remember what container I had my plates in or brought my plates home with? I was like, no, but I know it was one of the blue ones. I think. Yeah. But was it like solid blue or the one you could see through? And my dad just goes off. How dare you fucking talk to your mom like that? You just talking to her because I'm in this. I mean, I got this holes in my mouth. Blah, 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 blah. Now, holes in my mouth is funny. But at this point, I'm fucking getting heated. Because listen to what I just said. Hey, mom, have you seen my plates? What in that sentence would set anybody to fuck off? An interior designer? Maybe they get pissed. So I'm just like, hey, what are you yelling about? What is your problem? What is wrong with you? So my mom jumps in front of us. Walter, Walter, calm down. Walter, he ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck you mean? Why are you acting like I just did something wrong? Did I not just ask you for plates? And she starts waving me off like, go away. I'm just like, nah, I'm not a teenager woman. Nah, you, you can talk to me civilly. Or with some level of respect or like a fucking adult. Because I don't understand what's going on right now. But this looked like something I need to be invested in. So. He eventually. she. But here's the thing though. She waved at my dad. And that shit worked. He picked up his tank and went into the room. I was like. Well. I was never really sure who wore the pants in my parents relationship. But I know now. And I was like. What the hell was that? I was like. Look. I've, and my mom tells me. I think one of his medications is making him randomly hostile or unable to determine a difference between an aggressive act and a non-aggressive act. So, so what? He thought me asking you where my plates were was some type of a threat? Yeah. I was like, obstructive pulmonary, and she finished the sentence, yeah, it doesn't do that. It doesn't cause any form of hallucinations. It doesn't cause any type of auditory hallucinations. And it doesn't cause any form of aggression other than, you know, being angry when the time comes. It's like, he's hallucinating? No, but his medication is, I think it's making him random, have random bipolar fits of hostility or something. So what am I supposed to do? Just avoid him until he's dead? No, I don't think that's a that's how this works. I was like, well, yeah, and plus we got to watch him. So another week rolls by. His nurse, his nurse, uh, a physician trainer. Yeah. Uh, she stopped coming, apparently, because he just wouldn't do the exercise. He wouldn't yell at her, tell her, fuck you, call her out her name, uh, unless you count saying fuck you. I'm not sure if that's counting as calling someone out their name. It's more like a general insult at this point, you know, but she stopped coming because he was not showing signs of improvement, not because he's old, health is deteriorating. It's because he would wake up, watch TV, talk to people 
We want to know what's going on with him. Eat. Take his ass back to bed. So I was just like, hey, hey, dad. Uh, listen, you want to start trying to get your wheel situation figured out? You want to update it, you know, add my sisters to something, move some people around, just something. You got a lot of grandkids and great grandkids and a few great, great grandkids. So, uh, reminder, my dad was born in the twenties. Yes. The twenties. So. I just told him all of that. And I was like, listen, if you still got some random problem with me, I can talk to mom or we can go and get some other third party to handle that. What do you want to do? What do I need to do that for? I was like, you know why you need to get this taken care of. Don't make me say it. Boy, I'm going to still be here. I was like, how? Through the force of my will. I was like. Who is this person I'm talking to right now? Because this didn't sound like my dad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying my dad was a peaceful, happy-go-lucky man every damn day of his life. We all have dark days. My dad fucking went to war. Some of his friends, even if they got out of that shit, came home, blew their own heads off. He's seen his shit. So I'm just like, you know what? I don't know what's making him hostile specifically towards me. None of my sisters, none of his, my nieces and nephews had this issue with them, saw this side of him. So at this point in time, we're nearing, we'll say the 10th hour. There's about a week left in his life. Some of my cousins started trying to show up on my mom's side because, well, my dad was loved on both sides, especially when they forget or apparently never found out uh, the age disparity between my dad and my mom. (laughs) Oh, man. It's both disturbing and funny sometimes. But anyways. So one day I told one of my big cousins... Aramis, who I fucking hate talking to because Aramis is one of those people where his brain doesn't like to register or remember people exist unless he sees you every day. I don't know what you guys would call that type of person, but picture someone treating you like their best friend. He would give you an organ or a kidney, you know, after getting to know you for 10 years, 20 years or a month. And then the next day you move to a different house a block away or you change your number, give him your number and he doesn't contact you for 15 years and act like nothing happened. He's one of those assholes. But usually when death is involved or at least I don't know this yet, he acts like, you know, a decent human being. So I told him, hey, Aramis, let your mom know. I don't really care what you do with Arnita, his sister. Not a big fan of her, but we ain't going to get into that because we'd be here all day. Let, let her know. Hey, listen. Old man's in the hospital. They're getting re- they might give him intensive care or they, may, or they may have him come back home so he can have an overnight bag and they're going to keep him in intensive care or near intensive care uh, for a few days. We getting, It's getting bad. He's having trouble breathing. If you're not going to make a trip out there because you live far, you need to call him. Here's his number. Let your mom know. Let your sister know. If you feel like it. I don't really care if she knows. Also, don't bring Chris into this shit. Now, Chris, I haven't brought up during this whole thing, but let me tell you why. Um, Right before all of this stuff was happening with my dad, we were dumb enough to let my mother's uh, nephew or my aunt's little uh, son... Chris lived with us after he got kicked out of his parents' house, which he was very, very good at lying and ducking and dodge that he had got kicked out of. But I figured it out within literally 10 hours of him being there because he's always been bad at lying to me. And I didn't, I've never told him how many tells he has when he lies. 13. Boy, dumb. But see, here's the thing. 
Not only did he get kicked out and he almost got his ass beat multiple times by me, but my dad was nice enough to get him a job so he could eventually learn to stand on his own fucking two feet, help him get registered into his final year of school or maybe his second attempt at junior year because eh, he got kicked out and suspended a lot so he can get on his own feet. Now, my family has taken in like three or four different people at some point in time before since I've been alive. Nobody do we have a negative connotation or feelings for or do we hate. It was all done out of love or just caring or learning to love and care about them, even if they weren't related to us. Chris is the only one where that was a problem and it was a regret. And I wish I could have got my hands around that fucking neck. Many times as I beat his ass as a kid, just just let me beat his ass one good time as an adult. Oh my God, I don't care how much time I get. And I'm going to tell you why. Remember how I told you my dad was nice enough to get him into a school and also get him a fucking job so he could eventually live on his own? Not because we hated him, but because, let's be honest, we all know when you get into your adulthood, no matter how old you get, you trying to get your own shit. So if you're 20 and you got to move back in with your parents, you don't really want to. You want to go get your own shit. He was under no obligation or rush to get out. He didn't even have to contribute to the, the house bills or nothing. Just make money so you can stand on your own two feet. That first job my dad got him, this fuckboy stole a car in broad daylight from. Yeah. My dad, who took Christopher M, that's his actual middle name, the letter M. His mom didn't give a shit about his middle name. You already knew from the beginning this dude was going to be fucked up. Christopher M. Dyer. My dad took him in when he was homeless, got him into a school that would take him so he can finish his senior year or at least start it and a job and the first day or the second day he fucking steals a goddamn car from the lot in broad daylight and it was a car dealership so really he stole from his own boss who happened to be my dad's friend now at the time I laughed my ass off because my favorite thing to tell people about Chris is don't trust Chris with shit. Don't trust Chris with shit. In fact, the only thing you can trust him with is an actual turd that comes out of an ass. Because he has nothing to do with that shit. Kleptomaniac so, with the capital C. Yeah, so, no, yeah, not even that. He's a psychopath and a sociopath. He honestly thinks he's a good liar. He thinks he can just talk his way into anything. And I'm just in up here just laughing my ass off at my dad at the time because I fucking knew some shit like this was going to happen. I disowned this kid at his own birthday party when I was 10. And I'm his fucking cousin. You would think people would get the hint. So I had to go through a list of things that happened throughout my entire life that people denied. Not even people, just my dad denied. Because again... You're nice to my dad. He assumes that you're just a nice person. I was like, no, dad, this is a fuckboy. A crazy fuckboy. And here's the dumb part. This idiot returned the car like a week later or a few days later in broad daylight because he thought he could just do that. He fucking crazy. He is the literal opposite of my personality. Whatever you guys think about me as a group or as an individual, Flip that in reverse. Like in those old cartoons where there's an evil version of the character and they just have a black or a purple aura. Yeah, that's that shit. This reminds me of someone taking a package, a closed package, and saying, can I take it out to take a look at it? Yeah. So, then he finally understands and he regrets his decision. I told my mom about it when she got home. She laughed too. And she was like, and she looked at me and said, hey, is anything in the house missing? So we immediately started checking the entire basement and the entire living room. Fuck, I even stuck my head up in the crawl space in the attic. I don't know what we got up in there, but it don't matter. He could stick shit in there. Fucking, we told his dad about him. He was like, wait, Chris is over there? I was like, yeah, come get him. Something or come get his shit. Oh yeah, I'll be there. This nigga hot wired his own car because apparently the van Chris had that he drove over to us with to live here, he stole from his dad. 
And Dyer, being Dyer, or Daryl, that's his father's first name, Daryl, who looks a little bit too much like Iceberg Slim. Take that how you will. That's an actual person, by the way, Iceberg Slim. One of the most famous pimps in the world, literally. Um, fucking, instead of talking to us, apologizing, telling us what the fuck is going on, or taking the rest of his shit that Chris left, he just hotwired his own van, and he fucking pulled it out of the driveway. And I'm like, the kitchen window is directly over the driveway. I saw this bitch nigga doing it. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. If I get to be done with every dire that's related to me in some way, I'm cool with that because I'm not going to lie. Every dire I've ever met, with the exception of, ironically, the female dyers, it usually ends with them pissing me off and I didn't do shit to them. I, I don't even have a joke there. That's how it ends. So, Chris showed up one night. And my dad told me he saw him through the peephole. Woo! Go time! Now, for those who've seen Bleach, there's a sword called Tensei Zangetsu. I'm going to see if I can pull it up for you guys in the, the pick dump section real quick. There it is. Yeah, y'all see that sword in the pick dump section? No, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the sword from Bleach. I was I was allowed to have one of those. A sword that's almost as long as my fucking body. Bro. I told my dad open the door slowly. See what the fuck this fuck boy want. If he tries to come through that door, let him. I literally unlocked the second door because we had a two-door system on the front door. I unlocked it. He didn't see me. And I just grabbed the sword. I was like, man, let him do something stupid. So my dad's looking at him, disgusted him with disappointment. And he just says, what? Oh, well, hey. Hey, daddy, how you doing? Now... Chris didn't really grow up with his dad. In fact, his dad didn't get custody uh, sharing privileges until Chris was about like seven or eight. But for some reason, he tried to always call my dad his dad, literally telling me he was stealing my dad. And I knocked his ass the fuck out. He didn't say, hey, let's be brothers. He said, I'm going to steal your dad. Mind you, we're like three and four. I took that shit seriously. And let's be honest, I was kind of sort of right. So, eventually, after a few tussles, he stopped calling him dad and called him dad too or dad oo, which means literally nothing. And my dad didn't call him by his nickname. He's like, what do you want, Chris? You know, when someone says your name like they're wiping their ass with it like that. So, my dad was like, no, oh, I just, uh, Want to see how you're doing? He's like, uh-huh. Hey, uh, can I come get all of my clothes? I don't know where your clothes are. Well, if you let me in, I can get them. No. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, I'll see you later. You have a nice day. And he closed the door. I was so sad he didn't try to come in the house. Because that would have been breaking and entering. And in Illinois, yeah, you can pretty much do any... any you can pretty much end somebody for breaking and entering as of 2000 and seven I believe so anyways um I was like do we have his clothes like we don't really have them when he stole the car he fucking left them and I was like he fucking left them so I start walking really fast to the basement he's like hey boy what are you about to do everything I went down there I slashed some of his clothes I got some of them shits in a big ass the uh, garbage bag. And let's just say I coated them with our Kelly juice. I can't wait for him to come back and get his clothes. I'm going to give them to him. Just anything because I was so heated that he I'm offended. He didn't act like he normally does and try to steal something to break into the house. I was ready to box. You going to backstab me? Nah, not really. I ain't trust you since you was 10. I even told him when he was there. Bitch, I disowned you at your 10th birthday party. Don't act like I'm your cousin. 
Don't call me your cousin. I was just heated I didn't get to strike that ass, right? So eventually, in the middle of the night, like 10.30, Aramis is at the front door. Now, Aramis, if you remember, is the guy I told you to tell his side of the family, um, hey, dad's getting ready to drop, right? Or he's going to drop soon. Now, three days before that, Aramis popped by, which is why I had his new number at the time. And I didn't know Chris was hiding behind him. Right? So that's how the only way he even got in. So my dad came out. My mom came out. I was like, Aramis, why are you here? Ain't nobody heard from you in like eight years or seen you in just about as much time. So my parents are trying to play catch up with their nephew that they don't hate. But like I said, they don't, they don't understand Aramis logic like I do. They genuinely don't get, you don't exist to Aramis unless you're directly in front of him, you know? So, I was just like, you know what? It's almost Christmas. I'm just, I'm gonna let them have this nice time. But I'm gonna follow right behind Chris. And I asked him, where the fuck you going? Oh, I just wanted to get my clothes. I'll get your clothes. You stay right here. Right? So, fucking, I tell him, point blank, yo, uh, here's your shit that I feel like getting. Well, where's the rest of it? Fuck you. Like, I literally said it just like that. I, I told him, fuck you. So, um, he just said, oh, okay. And he bounced. Aramis looked like he was confused to know what the fuck's going on. I was like, oh yeah, yo ass got manipulated. I forgot he likes to hang around y'all because, well, when he hangs out with them, he can actually come upstairs. Apparently, his mom decided he's not allowed to have a key to his own house that he lived in. And that he's no longer allowed to go into the living room. He can only be in the basement. I swear if this thing wasn't some Jerry Springer type shit going on. So. Uh, fucking. I was like, uh. Was anything missing? It's was like, oh, because my mom went to lie down. I was like, nah, I let him. I fucking went and got whatever he's looking for. And I only gave him half. I was like. You only gave him half? Like, yeah. I gave him the drawers and the pants, his shoes and his shirt to stay in here for now. Right? Now, speed forward to my dad's funeral. I get stuck in airplane hell. I found out my flight's delayed for 15 hours. So I went back and I pretty much stayed, um at this convention I was at. At the time, it was the water park convention called Colossal Con. I was only going to be there for a day, but that day turned into 72 hours because there was a a 15-hour situation going on. Like, the planes were just diverted or not allowed to come there. We didn't know why. Well, as I found out, there was a tornado warning for the entire state, but it was also coming specifically from the section of the state in Ohio where I was. So they woke us up in like the middle of the night or something, and told everybody go into the basement of the entire hotel because we got a tornado warning. I was like, well, we should obviously just all get in the car, find a direction tornado and move in the opposite of it and then come back later. But well, this could be more convenient too. So I wasn't able to get to my dad's fucking uh, funeral, you know, but I was around friends. So I wasn't too sad about it. And if there's one thing my dad taught me in life, it's, hey, listen, you ain't nobody going to be here forever. So if you got people you can have fun with, try to have fun with them. Hold on a second. So, um, I'm just like, I'm on a flight. I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to try to calm down and stay stressed. So I get there. And my mom's telling me, he's like, hey, listen, would you have gone if you were here? So my mom knows this. And my big brother, Tremel knew this too. My dad makes his sons promise him not to look at his, his body in the casket. And in some cases, not go into the actual funeral procession at all. Now, he made me promise him this. Right. And I don't know why. But I'm assuming it has something to do with him in war and him not wanting to deal with death. He respected my grandmother, but I didn't know how deep his fear went. Until my grandmother's funeral. Well this motherfucker didn't make it past the staircase. I went in though. Fuck the bullshit. I let myself hurt. And I told her just point blank. I don't know. I don't know. And then she told me. Oh yeah. Why was Chris there? Now I'm almost offended. She thought I would have invited his ass. And I thought about it for a second. Wait, what the fuck you mean Chris was there? I looked at him dead in his face and I told him, you know damn well you're not invited. And he just looked at me and pretended I didn't say it and then walked off. I was like, hey, look, my mom, well, she's like, ha- at this point, she's over half a century. So I know she can't take Chris ass. I can, but I wasn't there. And my auntie Cookie was like, give my mom a hug. Um, and she, she's like, well... Telling her how much she respected and loved my dad and blah, 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 all this shit. And I'm just like, wait, 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 back up. Auntie Cookie, not Chris's mom, by the way, Chris's mother's name is Eunice. Auntie Cookie was there and she showed up right after Chris or at the same time. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I went in the kitchen and I called my cousin Aramis. Like, hey, Aramis, you remember when I cursed your ass out? Because you didn't do exactly what I told you to do to your side of the family and let them know he's dying. Go see him in the hospital. I left this part out so I could put it at the end for dramatic effect. Yeah, you didn't fucking do it, but you told Chris. My mom called you specifically to give you and your side of the family, not including him because you were told by me to leave him out instructions and let them know where the funeral is going to be. How the fuck was Chris there? You would think he would try to hide this shit. Oh, I brought him. So I'm just like, who the fuck told you to do that shit? Why did you do that shit? And he tries to get on his high horse. Man, you two need to stop being petty, man. Someone died in the family. And I'm just like, Aaron, someone you ain't fucking talked to in almost a decade. Bitch, you know he robbed my dad's friend right, right before he got bad, right? He was living here. That's why he showed up with you. Because he wasn't going to get in the fucking house. And I just remember cursing at him. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. Hung up the phone. And of course, like always, about three, four months later, Aramis has no idea that remembers this conversation and he's completely unaware that I fucking hate him and do not respect him because Aramis lives in Aramis world to this day. So, um, eventually my older cousin, Day Walker, who's in this group, y'all have met him before, who's Aramis' big brother, but you know, not, not an asshole. Um, he calls me up and I let him know what happened. I let him know what was killing him because apparently everyone thought he died from old age. Didn't realize, nah, he had a disease, but he was really good at fending it off. But he really actually wasn't. He just, something supernatural kicked in. I don't want to say miracle, but something supernatural kicked in. And despite his shit health habits, instead of lasting three years, like the doctor told him, he made it an extra fucking 19 on top of the three. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, I got a letter in the mail a few days after his funeral and it was a note uh, or a card with a, uh, a message in it from my dad in case he died. And I don't remember what it said verbatim, 
But basically, it went something along the lines of you're already making good choices without us having to tell you to make good choices. And I'm glad that happened. The end. But yeah, Chris is a dick. A total fucking dick. Y'all can go to voice activity now. I know Chris Island does lying too, just so he can get laid. Oh, he's done that before, which is ironic because apparently he's got the smallest dick in the whole family, which you would think that wouldn't be something you would brag about, but his actual words were some of your own lines of, hey, my dick small and I still get ass with it. I was like, why would you, why is that something to brag about? The Chris I know basically told everyone he was uh, bisexual so he can get puss. That's kind of impressive, but he still sounds like a dick. No, 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 no. He, he is. I mean, he would tell women that he was rich and whatnot. His family had money, even though his mom lived in a trailer park and... Oh, that's the type of guy you got to watch. That's the motherfucker that'll have 10 or 12 kids in like five years. Nothing but a walking libido. And his older yeah. brother was anything that stood. Hmm. Any questions? James? Oh, I... Uh... You want to hold down the button, bro? We only heard the first word. Oh. Wait, fuck. I don't have a question. But I did was... <laughs> but I was thinking, like, oh, shit. As soon as she said his full name, Chris M., I was like, oh, Chris M. Bison. <laughs> Is that Bison's first name? I know they did the Mike, Mike, Mike Tyson, Mike M. Bison switch around. But they said Major, what he was Major Bison because he was the leader of an army. But I don't think we ever got his actual first name. Fuck, I kind of want to know that now. But I digress. Um, with that being said, this brings another exciting episode of Life Stories to a close. I will see you guys when I see you guys. <laughs>